let's talk a little bit about how to deal with the needle in the haystack issue. Now the needle in the haystack issue is caused when you have a trace file that contains so many packets, so many different conversations, so many different hosts, so many different port numbers, that it's difficult to find where the problem resides. This is one of the reasons that a lot of people shy away from network analysis. But here are some tips on how to deal with this needle in the haystack issue. First of all, if possible, capture close to the client first, especially if you have a single client that is complaining about performance. Don't start out in the middle of the enterprise where you have traffic coming in from all different links and your analyzer is going to be saturated with packets. If you have to start out in the middle of the enterprise, then you might want to consider using capture filters to focus in on specific traffic so that you're not looking at this huge, monstrous amount of traffic that has nothing to do with the issue that you're troubleshooting. If you were to capture close to a specific client, then probably the amount of traffic that you'll be dealing with is much more manageable than if you were to start out in the enterprise anyway, and you may not need to use a capture filter. Use capture filters with caution. It can be very frustrating when someone filters out a lot of the traffic during the capture process, only to find that they needed to see that traffic to figure out what was going on. Use display filters liberally. You can use them to exclude some traffic, for example, all the good traffic. Maybe you want to exclude all of the virus uh, update traffic or exclude all of the Citrix go to my PC traffic that you expect to see in the background. What you should have left when you exclude all the good traffic is the bad traffic. Alternately, you can do an inclusion filter where you say that you want to only see the bad traffic. You saw me do this just a couple sections ago when I was looking at the HTTP response codes greater than 399. Consider colorizing some problem traffic. Now, some people don't like Wireshark's colorization, but we use the colorization to call our attention to specific packets. And we can set it up so that packets that we know indicate a problem are colorized a certain way. Consider adding filter expression buttons so you can quickly find network problems. I'll take you out to Wireshark in a moment and I'll create a filter expression button for HTTP errors. Reassemble traffic for clarity. So if you see a bunch of traffic going on between two hosts and you don't know exactly what they're saying back and forth to each other inside of the packets, you can right mouse click and choose to follow the stream to reassemble that traffic. In addition, you may consider building a graph so that you can visually see the relationship between all the traffic and maybe the error packets. We have a course called Graph IO Rates and TCP Trends, which is an excellent place to look to find out how to build the golden graph and identify problems using graphing. Now let me take you out to Wireshark and in one of the earlier sections, I created a display filter to focus in on bad traffic. Now I'm going to turn that filter into a filter expression button. I've opened up the trace file called HTTP-Errors101. And in this trace file, we knew that we had some 404 errors. We created a filter very quickly by selecting the status code field right mouse clicking on that field and preparing a filter based on the selected value. We prepared a filter instead of applied a filter because we want to edit the filter contents to say we're looking for anytime the response code is greater than 399. If this is a filter that you want to apply regularly to traffic, you can save it up here as a filter expression button. You can see that I've created one filter expression button already, TCP delay one, 
and if I hover over that button, I can see the filter that it will apply to the traffic. I want to save this filter for HTTP error responses as a button as well, so I'll click the Save button on the Display Filter toolbar. I'll name this HTTP ERR and click OK. I'll click the Clear button to remove information from the Display Filter area. Now when someone sends me a trace file, if I want to know if there are any HTTP errors in the trace file, I simply need to click the button called HTTP error. This is a fast way to find problems in a trace file. Throughout all of these courses teaching you Wireshark, you'll see that I constantly would be pushing you to customize Wireshark to be more efficient. I don't want you to get frustrated with the needle in the haystack issue.